while since I've done a video. The weather's been pretty crappy out. Uh, right now we have a warm spell, so everything's kind of warming up for now. Not sure how long that's going to last. But anyway, uh, over the winter, or over this winter, I've recently discovered a new interest of mine. And that is what you see before you. These are antique crosscut saws. Uh, most of them, I, I don't have an exact date on any of them. Uh, I haven't done any restoration yet on them, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to find a maker's mark or not. But anyway, if I had a guess, I'd say they're all from sometime around the 1930s, I believe. Also, what I have here is a Simmons crosscut saw tool. It's like a multi-tool, uh, but we'll get into that later. Picked this up on eBay. Picked up everything on eBay. I definitely paid a lot more than I should have because you know you're bidding against other people but the thing that was always lingering in the back of my mind is they're not making these anymore you know once once they're gone they're gone so the person that's really has brought my interest into these saws is uh, somebody on YouTube named Wrangler Star but anyway he did a couple video series on restoring his his family's antique crosscut saws and that's what really got the ball rolling for me from what I've been told the best way to refinish this saw is to take a honing stone and use diesel or kerosene as an, uh, a lubricating agent in a way to uh, take the filings and remove them from the cutting part of the stone anyway I've tried that and for a saw like this that has this much patina and rust, that is not the way to go about it first. Um, if you do that, you're going to end up having a big mess. And I've learned that the hard way. So from what I've learned, the best way to start polishing a saw in this shape or worse or, or somewhere around here. So the best way to start polishing a saw in this condition is to start with 120 grit sandpaper and you just start working the sandpaper in there back and forth. And when I say back and forth I mean long ways you don't want to work up and down or in circles because that will reduce your efficiency and it will create more drag on the saw. All this stuff that's coming out of here I'm going to start going back and forth here and just show you how much crud comes out of here. Alright, so we're about an hour in on the one side. And this is what it's turned out like so far. definitely coming along uh, now I'm gonna move on to the next step uh, just another note when you're getting these uh, teeth I found the best way to do it is to go just take a couple fingers and go up and down gently at the teeth and then after you've gotten as close to the tips as you feel comfortable getting then you take your sandpaper again and then you just go back and forth but leave a buffer zone between the tip of the teeth so you don't damage the set on the teeth. Um, I learned that the hard way. I ended up filing down the set on my teeth a little bit, but this is my first saw and I, I am just learning, so I'm not too concerned. I can just reset the teeth. It's just going to be more work. Okay, so I'm, I'm pretty well finished with sanding. Okay, so the best way I figured to uh, continue on after you finish sanding or you can even do this step throughout your sanding process is I take a shop towel I'm just going to fold that over nicely I'm going to take some brake parts cleaner and I'm going to spray this throughout the length of the saw and then quickly I'm going to go in with my shop towel and just wipe clean it away and just remove all that crap off there. So I'm going to hit it one more time. Do the same thing. And 
and that's gotten most of the gunk out of there. And now, this is when I find it to be an appropriate time to use your honing stone, or your axe sharpening stone, whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to do, um, this is all dried off now. So what I'm going to do now is take some lubricant, all-purpose lubricant. There's probably some better things like cutting oil or... I, I'm not sure what the best thing to use is, but I'm going to use this for my purposes. And I'm going to spray some on here. It's a little foamy because it's cold out. I'm going to spray some on the tip of my stone. Let that soak in. And now... Now I'm going to take my honing stone, I'm going to make strokes along the length of the saw, similar to sanding, and I'm just going to shine it up, get any more heavy marks that I've left in there with sandpaper, uh, it's a good idea to wear gloves, and then when you're working along the teeth, it's a good idea to keep... Uh, you know, like three quarters of an inch away from the tip of the teeth, however close you feel comfortable getting. awesome nice and shiny so this is the treated side and honed uh, with the processes that I have just explained to you and this is what the other side looks like this is what it looks like directly after sanding and after being cleaned and polished this is what this side turned out like Nice and shiny. That there is what two hours worth of filings look like. It's like they clean those hibachi tables. Sure was a lot more than that. Everything that went on the floor and everything that went in the atmosphere in front of me. Oh, it is important to have a clean work area. Alright, back to work. Okay, so I have the saw hanging up. The reason I have it hanging up is to see how straight it is. Going down the saw may be kind of difficult to see on camera. But right around there, we have a bend, at least one bend. So that will need to be fixed. I know it's difficult to see, but we definitely have a bend in there. I'm going to mark that out. So, there's definitely one kink here. There's 
a little bit of a second one right here. You can actually kind of see on the saw. Not very well from there, but there are some small nicks on there, so I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Alright, so we'll set this up and see if we can straighten it out. I have either end of the saw mounted up on blocks of, I believe this is 2x10, and I have a 2x4 down here. I'd attempt to hit it directly on my workbench, but that's one inch plate and it doesn't have much give. So I figured I'd try hitting it into a block and see what happens then. Now there is a specific hammer for this, being as though I do not own it. I'm just going to go ahead and use a, a ball peen hammer. And when striking this, you want to go... I, I guess the, the proper way to do it would be in lines. You know, you don't just want to keep nailing in the same spot, you want to go kind of down a line. From my understanding. Give this Right about there, but it's entirely up to you how much time you want to spend into straightening out your saw. The straighter you have it, uh, the cleaner it will go through the curve of your cut, and the less drag and the more efficient saw you have. So it's definitely worth putting in the time and effort to make sure you have a straight saw. Real quick, real quick, here's my redneck jig. On one side it is a 2x4 that is clamped to the table with those big C clamps. And then I have a what is that? I think it's a one by one by one piece of cedar. Two by two? I don't know. Um maybe one and a half. One and a half by one and a half piece of cedar that is clamped to the other two by four on the opposing side with a couple of eleven R clamps. So now we're going to go on and start joining the saw. Okay, so I have my homemade jig and I have my Simmons multi-tool. Uh, I guess I was reading the directions that came with this. There, There's a special Simmons crosscut file. From my understanding, I guess that could bend and that way you can maintain the curvature of the saw. However, uh, I, I haven't been able to find any of them. I don't know if there's any cir circulating around. But anyway, I just have a regular file. And if you notice on the end, I hit it with a bench grinder to give it a smooth angle. So that way, when I go over the teeth, I won't trip up. So the next process is called joining the teeth. Jointing the teeth. And that's the process of going or uh, sliding your file throughout the teeth and maintaining the curvature of the saw and making all the teeth and uh, raker teeth level with each other or even with each other. So I'm going to start joining the saw. And you can see some of the tips of the teeth are starting to become flat. And from my understanding, you want to continue to do this until you can see bare metal on every single tooth. And then you may want to go a little bit further than that so you have a little wiggle room when you're sharpening your cutter teeth and rakers. Mm -hmm. 